Hey Shalom, Sister Kate here. Good morning. Last night or yesterday, there were uh, 13 Mormons in Mexico shot um, the cartel or, and burned alive. The cartel murdered them. And there's public outrage. There's, you know, even our president spoke out about, you know, possibly going to war with the Mexican cartels because it's kind of a heinous act. Um, but it brings up a point. Now, I think I've said it, I, I know I've said it in person to people, but this, this Sukkot was a spirit-filled Sukkot. There was a lot of spiritual things happening. And the week after Sukkot was also a lot of spiritual things happening, but more towards the negative side. And I, I attributed that to uh, satanic influence, to the fact that Halloween is a high holy day for the Satanists, and so they are really attacking the saints powerfully. Um, and things happened that caused grievance, but it wasn't, you know, total disaster. It was not a total victory. And I reminded the people that I talked to, uh, we're in a spiritual battle. We're in spiritual warfare. And the way you uh, defeat it is, one, you stand for Jesus, because it says in James 5 um, that if we stand for Jesus, uh, the the devil will flee. And then um, Homestead Tessie did a video on spiritual warfare and there was a uh, newspaper in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and it was a woman uh, journalist and she did a story on a woman casting out demons. And that woman, the, the exorcist, is I think a Pentecostal church, pretty sure it was a Pentecostal, like Church of God. And in it, there was a nurse who was beset. You know, she just said heavy feelings, bad feelings, so on. And a voice told her to jump out a two-story window. And she did, and she was paralyzed. Um, and she's been tormented ever since then. And then this lady uh, heard about her through a friend of a friend and came and did a, a uh, you know, an exorcism. That's what the Catholic Church calls, calls uh, casting out demons. Um, and there are four, there are four uh, prerequisites that the Catholic Church has to determine whether someone has demonic um, possession of you. And I forget what they are. Something uh, weird behaviors, uh, bad behaviors that people have not seen before, talking in different voices or languages that you've never, don't know, um, Refusal to say mass or go to mass, you know, things that are more specific to, to them. Where in the Bible, uh, the spiritual, the demonically tortured people are doing things like uh, living in a cemetery, howling, um, ripping off chains, ripping off clothes, supernatural strength. The one little boy is throwing himself on the ground and in fire, uh, etc. Sometimes it's just bad health. Anyway... If you believe in right or wrong, then it should not be a much farther step for you to believe that there are evil influences and good influences in, in your life. And the idea of right and wrong is what is called a moral or morality. <coughs> and morals are, you know, if you're moral, you're good. And if you're not moral, you're bad. If you're immoral, you're bad. All of that ties right back to the Bible, and all of it ties right back to ideas that are in there. And most people's definitions of what is evil is basically breaking Torah. Committing murder is evil. Well, that, that's breaking Torah. Thou shalt not commit murder. Um, <clears throat> cheating people is evil. Well, that's against Torah, too. You don't move the boundaries of your property. You don't use uneven scales. If you injure... <laughs> if you injure someone or their property, Torah says you must pay it back, etc., etc. <coughs> so if you believe in good and evil, and you believe in moral or immoral, then you're basically keeping biblical truths anyway. Just wanted to put that out there. So let's flip that coin, because I like to flip coins. If you're immoral, if you have no rules for good and bad, and you do 
certain actions that other people consider bad, and yet you've put no value on that action. And specifically what I'm thinking of is a case of abuse, all right? If, um, well, here, the, the Mexican c cartel's behavior. They, I believe what they did is they set a van on fire with, pe with people inside, including babies. If you don't have any rules for right or wrong, why then would you think that action was bad? I hope you're following that thought process. Because in order for you to think it's bad, you have to have a value that it's bad. This is negative. Uh, let's use stealing. <clears throat> if you're brought up and stealing is good, then you're not going to feel anything but elation and pride and all sorts of things if you steal something. If you're brought up to feel stealing is good. So in this immoral world that we have, because we all agree there's some very immoral things going on in our world right now, not the whole of the world, parts of the world, why then do people feel bad? Let's say if stealing is good and someone steals something from you, you feel bad about it, something's taken from you, why would you feel bad about having something stolen if stealing is good? Or if it doesn't matter who you injure or harm, then why do people who have no values at all still feel abused, still feel oppressed? Uh, so many people hate President Trump. <clears throat> well, if you don't follow the Bible and you're one of those, you know, I get to do, how do they put it? Um, whatever, whatever, I do what I like. That's basically the satanic creed. But my point is this. If you're a person who has that as your basis, whatever, whatever, I do what I like, then if somebody does something to you, like steals something from you, then you should not feel bad about it if morals don't matter, if morals aren't inherent in all of us. And yet so many people claim to be neglected or abused or uh, oppressed or you know, um, they need their little safe space and all that other stuff. <clears throat> it's because the world is based on God's creation and there is good and evil and we all know it in our hearts because it says in the Bible, I will put my laws into their hearts in Jeremiah 31, 31. So that's why we're outraged when things happen like someone burning <clears throat> a family to death on a car. That's why we're outraged when we see people misusing their animals or we're outraged when uh, people abuse children. It, it, it goes against the grain of our nature. And uh, we also want justice. Justice is an equal payment for the crime, which is also what the God does. We're told that he is just. And so if you commit a crime like murder in his book, you get the death penalty in his book. That's how justice works. And when we see situations where <clears throat> people are hurt, injured, murdered, whatever, we want justice because that's also in our heart. So, <clears throat> what do you think about that? And are you a moral person? And have you thought about where your morals come from and what they're based on? I think the answer will be very surprising to you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. Shalom.